Hi everyone, this is Tim here at Maker's Machine. Got a little topic I'd like to tell you about here today. Uh, you always hear the saying you can't put a round peg in a square hole. Well, I'd like to show you a little bit about how that might be done. Uh, I've got a, a round peg here. It's two inches in diameter. and uh, got a plate with a, a round hole in it. And you see it fits right in there. It's, it's just barely fitting in there. I, uh, I got the round two inch diameter pin. We made the hole about two inches and two thousandths. We wire EDM cut that, so we've got a nice accurate size on that. So obviously a round pin goes in a round hole, but you can also take that round pin, and if you turn it sideways, you can put it in a square hole. And it fits that hole perfectly. My pin is two inches in diameter, two inches long. The window here is two inches square. So the diameter will fit in there either way and the length will fit in there either way. Now this might be kind of a, one of those little things that uh, you have to do some thinking outside the box once in a while, but there's also another uh, way that you can fit something like that into another shape yet on top of it, the same part, that being a triangle. So I've got here in my little collection of things here, I've got a round pin that fits in a round hole. I take the same plate that we had before and I take my round pin and I can stick it in this square hole just right but if you look at another option you've got a triangle and we've cut the angle on this round pin we've cut the sides on an angle just so it comes to the very edge here and dead center in the middle there and now our our triangle will fit in that in that uh, hole also. It's a it's a tight fit. We've wire EDM cut these shapes here, but take a look at that. It uh, it fits all three shapes. The round peg goes in a square hole, and you can also take that round peg and make it a triangle. And it fits all these holes are just the same. Uh, the the key ingredient is the two inch dimension. We're two inches in diameter two inches long and then those two inch dimensions the diameter the diameter and the length we've also cut the the taper on the angles there and those are exactly centered and come out even on the end um, now you could probably draw that thing up ahead of time and get a get some dimensions on there it's not a common angle on here uh, I've got it figured out here I show I don't know if you can see it here we got the two inch diameter We've got the two inch square, and then over here we've got the three sides of the triangle. Well, each side of the triangle is 63.4 degrees, or an included angle there of 51.3 degrees. That's the shape that fits into that. Now, I didn't figure that out. I have to give credit to somebody that showed me that a long time ago. I went to Washburn Trade School in Chicago, and my instructor there, he came up with that and, and had that set up to show you know, there's, there's a lot of solutions to what you can do. Making a plan, like the drawing here that I showed you. Uh, doing some thinking outside the box so you can get, get some of those odd shapes. And uh, I went ahead and I made a new, a, a single plate that had all three of those things in. I've not shown this to too many people before. Uh, I take this to the trade shows if I go to a trade show, but here are these three holes. I mean, it's a tight fit. There's a thousandth of an inch clearance. Fits the triangle. If I can get it out of there. Fits the circle. And fits the square. Now, uh, conventional thinking is that if you have a two inch diameter hole and two inch diameter pin, it won't fit in there. I'm having a hard time getting this thing to go in there, but you just gotta, you gotta work it till you get it just right. There it goes. It goes right through. A two inch diameter pin will not fit in a two inch diameter hole. You gotta have a little bit of clearance. Otherwise it would be a press fit. There's just a little bit of interference. That comes in handy with the uh, bushings and bearings and that type of thing. If you want a, a press fit or a, a snug fit so it holds in place, you have to give it a zero clearance or even a, a little bit over uh, oversized uh, press fit. So anyhow, I just, uh, I just wanted to show you that, thinking outside the box. Um, when we made this uh, plate here, we wire EDM cut that. 
there's a wire EDM behind me here and uh, you can go and you can make perfectly square cuts perfectly round cuts these shapes you can cut it will leave a little radius in the corner we use a ten thousandths diameter wire and the wire never touches the workpiece it has a spark that goes from the wire to the workpiece and a ten thousandths wire will make a fourteen thousandths wide cut roughly thirteen point seven to be exact um, so there is going to be a if you got a fourteen thousandths uh, circle at the wire cuts that means you got a seven thousandths radius in the corner so when you wire EDM something uh, you can make a little move into the corner to get so it will accept a square part or your mating part maybe has to have just so there's not a sharp corner on there but uh, anyhow I, I thought this was an interesting uh, topic that I saw somebody showed me this and I've always had this around to show people how different things fit and how they've got to be made to fit uh, just an interesting topic but uh, you know we're talking about basic machining here EDM wire EDM is a little bit farther out there than that uh, I drew this up on CAD so you know I showed you the 63.4 degree angle on there uh, you can figure that out you know mathematically or if you're doing CAD drawing you can draw those lines and the shapes and get your three views and put in the angle dimensions automatically with the uh, dimensioning function on the uh, CAD system so you don't do have to do a lot of math if you can uh, get the layout made and, and connect all the lines you can check the dimensions um, and with today's drafting and many of you are probably already doing that with uh, with CAD in school uh, you know you got the 3d modeling all those uh, types of CAD functions where you can have a three view drawing like I showed you but then up in the corner you can put an isometric view and and you know the modeling and, and all these other things you can rotate rotate that piece around and see exactly what it looks like on CAD which is a nice tool and if you get a three view drawing like I like I had here it shows you the front side and top view uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to visualize what the part is but if, if off to the side uh, whoever's making the drawing uh, can put an isometric view that you can rotate around it's a lot easier to see what the part is so the technology that we've got today with the wire EDM and making accurate cuts and, and CAD drafting that really is a good thing for you to learn we just recently did a uh, a little tape on you know a young fella came in and uh, is interested in engineering so we, we cut a keyway and a shaft in our most recent episode but uh, you know doing that work you know you need a plan having CAD drafting is nice because you can make a print whether you have a manual machine or some kind of CNC machine, you'll need all those dimensions that you can get on your CAD drawing. Making three view drawings is a key thing and making it so you can understand and see how the drawing is made uh, so you can make the part off of that. You know, a lot of these uh, solid works and modeling views, they might, they might show you the part but not give you a three view drawing. Well then, there's sometimes there's not any dimensions on that so you have to have a pretty high-end CAD system to take that view that's modeled and get dimensions off of it so you can make it so it's always good to get uh, a three view drawing with the uh, isometric view on there is good um, you have to be careful also with CAD drawings because uh, if somebody makes a CAD drawing and emails it to you and you open it up in your CAD system sometimes it doesn't come out the right scale so you have to be ever vigilant on on that so I always ask people if you're going to send me a CAD drawing send me a PDF of your print you know a full-size drawing that shows all the dimensions that you know the, the engineer wants he's got to show me the full-size drawing with the dimensions and then when I open up the CAD drawing I can verify that yes this is showing me a two-inch circle because sometimes if there's different softwares added on to a CAD system and everybody doesn't have the same thing it, it distorts and changes the scale factor sometimes so uh, a lot of information here but uh, just things that uh, I thought this was an interesting topic here with this with this plate with all these holes in it uh, somebody told me how to about that I, I didn't think it up myself but uh, there's all kinds of little things in, in machining that you can do and they're kind of fun to make so if you're to machine this thing you, you probably have to uh, strictly machine it you'd have to take a round bar two inches in diameter 
and maybe put that in a vise and get the angle on there. It was uh, 63.4 degrees. Then you'd have to flip the bar upside down and machine it again to 63.4 degrees. And then you've got to cut it off. And you know, if you cut it off on the saw, that's fine. But then you've got to put it back up in the in the vise in the mill or in the lathe. If you you could probably grab it well enough here and face it off so it's square. But you got to make sure it's exactly two inches long. So you can make that part by machining. We wire EDM cut this thing. We put a two inch bar in. We uh, got the end location because where this where this angle comes out and that angle comes out, that gives us a nice flat surface. So we cut the two cuts and then we just lopped it off in the wire machine. It was you know one setup. We, we were cutting this triangular orientation here. So you can uh, you can get all those things made by doing that machining, whether it's EDM machining, then you also machine the uh, the holes in your plate. So if you get the urge to do something kind of interesting that you can show people that you can put a round peg in a square hole, and then you can even put a triangular uh, part in that uh, in a hole also made from the same piece. All three views show you that you can fit those in your uh, your plate. So three view drawings and do a little thinking, you'll you'll have it good. So. Anyhow, I just wanted to give you that uh, little interesting function there that uh, you can make parts that are kind of neat. Maybe they don't have any purpose in, in the world around us, but it's an interesting thing to look at. Anyhow, uh, thanks for joining us here today on Maker's Machining. We'll see you again. So long.